Hey and welcome to another video with Blocks Builder. And in today's video we're going to be looking at uh, another installment of Better Buttons. And today's button we're going to look at is what I would like to call a premium button. Kind of a premium classy button, a minimalist button. So here I have our Blocks project. I just have a single column um, block here. And I'm going to add a button. Chink, just like that. I'm going to center this button here. And I'm also going to change the style to no style. And let's give this button a label of uh, premium. Let's call it premium class. Okay, you won't see anything on the canvas at the moment because we've removed all the styling. So let's give this button our own custom class. I'm going to call it BTN premium. Nice. And we're going to add some styling to this button. So we're going to keep it uh, pretty simple. It's going to be quite minimalistic. Uh, we're going to change the font typeface. Let's use Ubuntu and uh, change the color so we can see it. And uh, let's make it nice and big um, so it's easy to see. All right. So a couple of things we're going to do for our effect here is that we're going to set some uh, letter spacing because we're going to add a bit of an effect on that. And so I'm going to do that now too. So we're in our BTN Premium class. Change our letter spacing here. I'm going to use EM to make it um, scalable. And I'm going to set our actual our hover class. So what I'm going to do is as we hover over this button, our lettering is actually going to, um, the letter spacing is going to expand. So I'm going to work out what our hover is going to be like. And it's not going to be that big. 0 0.08. 0 0.06 maybe yeah we'll just do, we'll stick with that so we're going to do 0 0.06 on our hover i'm just going to copy that makes it easy and i'm going to do 0 0.02 for our uh, standard letter spacing so just while i before i forget i'm going to move to our hover state and i'm going to put that there in our letter spacing cool and of course we won't see it on our canvas so that's why I do it that way, so you can get a visual gauge of what it's going to look like. Okay, if we just go in and preview this now and have a, a quick look at our um, browser, we can see as we hover over, we see that expansion right there of our button. Cool. So what we're going to add now is we're going to add a line above and below our text. So we're going to go back to our canvas. And we're going to use uh, pseudo elements for this. So if we bring up our class manager, I'm going to right click on our BTN premium class. And we've got these options here to create pseudo elements. So we've got before and after. So I'm going to use the before one to place the line above. And I'm going to use the after for the bottom, uh, the line below. So I'm going to create a before. And we should, while we're here, let's create the after. Okay, let's uh, define our BTN Premium before. I'm going to set our um, width just for the moment at 100% so we can visually see what's happening. And then I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to set the height to 2 pixels. I'm going to give it a background a color of black just for now. Actually, one thing we want to do, actually, let's go back to our button again. And um, I want to set our positioning to relative. Okay, now let's come back to our pseudo um, class, our before class. And I'm going to set our positioning to absolute. Awesome. And you can see our line appear right there now. So I'm going to set it a little bit higher up. So I'm going to change this to EM. And probably let's try 0.025. It's going to be a minus number because we're going to want it to go upwards. Minus 0.5. Cool. That's all right. We're just tweaking it slightly. And of course, you can change all this to suit your design. I'm also going to set the left and the right edges here to zero. That's pretty important. And the other thing we want to do is we want to set our left and right margins to auto. And now the reason why we're going to do that is we're not going to have our line set at 100%. We're going to set this to, let's say, 20%. It looks pretty good. So that actually puts our line in the, the middle. 
of our text. So we have our width at 20% and our line height of 2 pixels. We have our margin set at left and right auto. And our position tab is set to absolute. We have a top edge of minus 0.05 EMs and we have our, our left and our right edges at zero. Okay, so we're going to replicate this uh, for our line at the bottom, which is using our after element. And so absolute, this time we're going to set the bottom one here, EM 0.05, is that what I used? Again, we're going to set our edges to zero, our margins to auto, our width, just so we can visually see, we'll set that at 100% and our pixels to 2. Oh, and our background color needs to be black. Okay, we can see our line there. Uh, that needs to be minus 0.05. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm going to set our width to 20% so it matches our other one. Awesome, let's have a quick look at this in the browser. Okay, so we have our, um, our button text expanding on hover, the, the letter spacing. But we have this weird effect where because we're using 20% for our um, top and bottom lines, it's expanding with the text. So what we can do to fix that is by setting a, a maximum width for our button. Okay, so let's come back to our button class. And let's set a width here of, say, now we, we need to allow for the fact that I've got a bigger font here, but also the fact that um, our, text, our text is going to expand on hover. So let's say 380. And that's too small. We can see that. Okay, when you go much bigger here than I was expecting, let's do 400. Awesome. Okay, so now we see, if we go back to our browser, um, we can see that our text line spacing is expanding, but our lines are remaining static. Awesome. So what we want to happen now, as we hover over and our text expands, we want these lines to also extend out from the middle and um, reach 100% width of our button. So uh, we're going to uh, do that by creating a couple more classes. So let's think this through for a minute. So we have our before and after pseudo elements. The thing being is when we, if we come in here and to our pseudo element and we change our hover state to hover, that's only going to apply if someone puts their cursor over the actual element itself. So what we want to do is we want when people hover over our button for our pseudo class to be affected. So the easy way to do that is I'm just going to duplicate our button premium before. So come here and we're going to duplicate cast. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a modification here. So I'm going to remove the hyphen copy at the end. And I'm going to come back here to after our class name. So we've got button premium. I'm going to put a colon there and I'm going to put hover. So what this now tells us is when someone hovers over our button, it's gonna we're gonna affect our before element with the styling here, and we're gonna change our width to one hundred percent. So if we have a look at this now, refresh the page, when we hover over, our top line is changing to one hundred percent. Awesome. So we're gonna do the same for our bottom element. So again, I'm going to duplicate our button premium pseudo element after duplicate and then I'm going to edit the name I'm going to remove the copy and after our button class I'm going to put colon hover and we'll change that to 100% let's have a look nice Okay, so we're getting the basics of our button there. 
what we want to do now is we're going to add a little bit of transition using some CSS to soften it out and make it look really cool. And we can do that using our code editor. And let's just scan this for a moment. Get rid of that. And reposition our windows. Okay. So we have um, we're going to change our input zone to additional CSS. And I'm going to put in here the class uh, name of our button. Button premium. Now there's a few ways to do this. Um, so you can write transition. Uh, and we're going to use the short, shorthand methods today. So as you see, uh, Blocks now auto-populates um, or gives us some options that we can choose. You can actually build up your CSS by using uh, a series of these um, setting delays and duration of property. But we're going to use the shorthand method, which is um, a way of typing this out without adding all of these here. So I'm going to do transition. And quite often you'll see someone use um, something like all and then they'll um, say have the timing, which is 600 milliseconds, and then the, the type of timing effect, so it might be uh, linear, or you might see um, ease in, ease in, ease out, something like that. We're going to do ease out, but we're also not going to use all. So um, there is a problem when you're using all, and you should be careful when you do use it, because if you're using box shadows or anything like that, it can actually be resource hungry on your browser. So if you've got a, a, a user who's got an old computer, they're using an old phone, uh, it can be problematic and make your website actually quite sluggish for your user. So when we can, let's be really specific. And so um, I'm going to show you how to do that here. So we're going to affect on our BTN Premium class for our button uh, the thing, the only thing that we changed was our letter spacing, right? So I'm going to use that letter spacing. Um, I'm going to have 600 millisecond timing and we're going to ease out. If we go and preview this, refresh the page, you'll see now our lettering spacing has that nicer, softer transition to it on hover. Cool. So let's... Uh, Make that a bit slower, shall we? Only because it's uh, pretty big. Nice. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to add the same sort of transition on our lines because we don't want them to just jump in like that. We want a nice uh, transition, a nice little animation on our lines as well. So we're going to come back to our code editor. And we actually just going to add up here our pseudo elements. So we can do that by using a comma and then a btn premium before. So that'll be our top line. And then do another comma btn premium after. So we can uh, combine our CSS um, selectors just like this. So all of these three now are going to be affected by the styling we're going to put in here. Now, if we go and preview this, we're going to see no change at all because we're specifically targeted our letter spacing. So what we want to add now is we want to add an additional, um, additional style here for our width. So we can do that by coming into our transition, adding a comma, and now we're going to do width and let's do 800 milliseconds and we can do a similar effect ease out cool our top one's working and our bottom one isn't which means i've probably got a typo uh before oh here we go we've got a hyphen there rather than a couple of columns there we go Nice. Now the other advantage of um, writing out our styles like this as opposed to using all, apart from um, 
the load on a page, the resources, is that we can also set a delay. So we've got our letter spacing. Let's speed that up. We're going to do our letter spacing at 600 milliseconds, and we're going to have that ease out. But the width of our lines, we're going to have um, them happen at the same rate, 600, but we're going to set a delay. So the delay is only going to apply to our width, not our letter spacing. So at the end of ease out here, so we've got width, 600 milliseconds, ease out, and then because we're using shorthand, our next, um, our next thing that we add here is going to be the delay. So we could do, um, if we did a 600 millisecond delay, it means our lines will start moving just after our letter spacing has finished. Awesome. So uh, with these sort of options, you can do lots of cool things. Let's uh, break this down. Let's maybe have a delay of 200 milliseconds and see how that looks. Cool. We could also do it the other way around. So we want to add the delay to the letter spacing. So we could put that in here after the ease out. Let's say add a 200 millisecond delay there, and we're going to remove our delay from our lines. So our lines will go out first, and then our letters. Nice. So there's lots of cool things we could add to this. Um, you know, you could add lots of different styles, and as I've shown you here uh, with the transitions, is that you can just stack multiples and um, it come up with some really neat things. So even though this is kind of like a minimalist sort of premium sort of effect, uh, it can be the basis of a lot of awesome designs. So I uh, look forward to uh, what you can come up with. Um, please share them and uh, comment below uh, the types of buttons you'd like to see created in blocks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Have a fantastic day.